you had uh, some experiences shooting the uh, the late Bray Wyatt, and especially as uh, the Fiend character. Just wondering yeah. what what that was uh, like for you, given you know the uh, immense cinematic presence that he had, uh, uh, not only as the Fiend but as the the original Cape Fear style character, and just memories yeah. of him as a human being. I, you know, I didn't do a lot. I never went to FCW. Uh, we had Florida guys cover all that. So I never, I was never in Tampa. And then one of the other staff guys was moving to Florida. Um, he said he would move, you know, he said he would move to Florida. He was, he was going to cover everything. And then it's, oh, hey, um, we're going to move in and go moving to Orlando and call it NXT. He's like, well, I live in Tampa. <laughs> so it's like, well, I guess you're driving to Orlando. So he covered all that. So I wasn't there at the beginning. I mean, my first meetings with him was Husky Harris <clears throat> um, with Nexus. And, uh, you know, he was, you know, I'd heard he was, he was Mike Rotunda's son. And I, Mike, I did a lot of international tours with. I always sat with him on the bus or, or on a plane ride and I would talk. He would tell me stories. So I enjoyed talking to him. He told stories from back in the day. And being someone that grew up through that era, it was fun to hear his stories from, you know, working back in the eighties and then as different characters and a very nice guy. I mean, I feel bad for all of them, you know, the bow, his sister, his mom. I mean, it's just kids, Jojo. It's horrible. Um, but as Husky Harris, when he first come, I'm like, I don't really like this guy. He's kind of an attitude. He's like one of those meathead football players. It's kind of how he was. Uh, we were on it. They were on, they came on one of the first tours. And I played college football, I think at Troy university. Um, it was Troy, somewhere down south, maybe in uh, Louisiana, because uh, he would talk with one of my guys, a uh, guy that played for the Buffalo Bills, was his teammate. Uh, but this day, and now he came back as Bray. Like, it was Husky, and then he disappeared. Went back to NXT. Um, I didn't know anything about this Wyatt family. Like I said, I, I rarely ever went to Florida. Uh, and they had him start doing dark matches as the Bray Wyatt character. I'm like, wait a minute, is this the same guy? He's got the big beard now and long hair. He had the short hair. He was he had some more tattoos on him. <clears throat> and I'm just hearing on headset, um, the director at the time saying, This kid's gonna be a star. I really, I really like him. You know, he's got a good, good vibe and the whole I'm like, this guy's out of this, you know, kind of out of this world character. <clears throat> then he disappeared. You know, went back to NXT, and then you know, I forget when they made their debut as the wife, but I didn't know Eric uh Rowan, and I didn't know uh, Brody, I know, I didn't know, uh, Harper. I didn't know any of those guys. I'd never met them. Um, when they came, I was like, wow, you know, it's, and with the shields, like, wow, these are a couple of solid factions. And as I got to know, uh, Bray Moore, I realized that he's very, very nice, quiet, soft spoken guy, very creative. Um, and then when they were doing the whole fiend, it was, Hey, I think we were in Pittsburgh when he started the, the original the stuff I posted online was, after he got lit on fire, I should have, I didn't uh, specify that, but that was after he was lit on fire by Randy. That was that mask. Um, the original ones, I think we started in Pittsburgh and uh, Tom Savini, that big special effects, <clears throat> uh, special effects guy, Jason yeah. Baker worked for him. And I'd met them both in Pittsburgh and they'd done some other stuff with some talent. He's like, he's going to be this. And they started putting the mold and you know, I'm taking pictures. I'm running out. I'm coming back. I'm like, yeah, Bray's like, yeah, dude, this is gonna be some crazy, shit, crazy shit. <laughs> and uh, you know, when they made the whole thing, it was like, like how do you breathe in that and the outfit and uh, and uh, you know, I guess he, you know, it's just how I don't know, I just feel like they kind of went sideways with him also with with uh, with that character and uh, during COVID with all the matches and Braun was feuding with him. Braun was part of the Wyatt family and. You know, he, he went away, was whatever issues he had, health, mental, you know, he was coming, came back into the stuff with LA Knight. And then, you know, just from what I read, I don't follow a lot. And just, he was supposed to be coming back. Mm -hmm. And then somebody texted me that I used to work with. And, Dude, is this true about Bray? I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And I go online. I'm like, oh my God. And at first of all, I thought he was a little older than 36. Not that he was old, obviously. I'm, he's a lot younger than me. <clears throat> but I thought he was a little old older than 36 years old so i mean it, any age is too young i'm 56 now but you know i met the kids jojo i know obviously worked with her i met his children from his first 
uh, marriage at a WrestleMania and they're cute little girls. And there's why, you know, we, he's running around with them, like tattoos with being a soft, cuddly daddy, you know, he's, that's the way he was. And he was into a lot of stuff and he, you could have conversation with him just about anything. He's like, my, my kids are teenagers and we had those conversations about the, how they would aggravate, <laughs> aggravate me, get phone calls on the road. But, uh, yeah, just sad. I you know he's just, I text with a few of the guys from work and everybody was just broken up about it because he was he was a sweetheart of a guy. He really was. And I would talk with Mike about it. I was like, where does he come up with this stuff? He said, from when he was a kid, he was very creative and would do some, a lot of stuff that was out there that you, you say, like, you know, as a child. But he was, he said, he always had a very creative mind <clears throat> making up all these characters as a kid. So it was always, brain was always working like that, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was a horrible tragedy.